Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. I know I've been slowing down on my journey into the 1980s, but just been very busy with stuff. And during this week, I actually want to catch up on some movies that I've been curious about, haven't seen in a while. A few films just to mention I Am Wrath, new film with John Travolta. Spectre, James Bond film that I had not seen yet because I've seen all the other James Bond films and reviewed all the James Bond films. Um, a few others which I'll get to. But this one is about Taken 3 because I reviewed the first film which I love. I reviewed the second film which I hated. So here's a review for the third film. Which the tagline says, it ends here. And I'm like, I fucking hope so. <laughs> Please let it end here. As you can see, I did not like this movie. The first Taken is a film that only needed to be one film. It's a film that had a beginning, a middle, an end. It dotted the I's, it crossed the T's, it told its story, it finished its story. And you didn't need any more stories for Taken. The sequel comes out, you have a shitty director who did Transporter 3, who did Columbiana, horrible director. You did a silly story that becomes a parody to the point you have the fucking daughter character, in order to find Liam Neeson, tells his daughter, yeah, you're on a rooftop, throw grenades, and let it blow up throughout the street, so I can hear how close you are, because no one will notice you throwing grenades into the fucking street, or no one will notice a guy is this far away with a gun at me, and I'm talking, I'm literally telling my daughter, yeah, go hide. Even though this guy has a gun to me and can hear me, every word I say, and he's this close to my face. By the way, I'm still on the phone, and he could take it, but I'm still telling you to leave. That's how fucking stupid taking two is. Taking a number two. God damn it, man. And then you get to the third film, which even the title doesn't make sense when you get the Taken 3, because nothing is really taken. No one is kidnapped. The gist of plot, Liam Neeson has his daughter. You have the ex-wife who, being friendly with Liam Neeson, want to become friends, maybe something more again. Her new husband, boyfriend, however you want to call it, and not paying attention to her. One leads to another, she gets killed. Which makes the second film pointless, because the second film was him and Fonda Johnson being taken. And now in Taken 3, Fonda Johnson just murdered. Liam Neeson is framed, and he has to prove his innocence. So I'm like, it's weird, it's called Taken 3, but it's not about anyone being really... I guess you could say Fonda Johnson's life was taken. But it's just... This is a film that didn't need a franchise. This is a film that didn't need sequels. And if you're going to do sequels, you don't have Olivier Megaton to direct them. He did, again, Taken 2, Transporter 3, Columbiana. Every one of those movies sucked ass. He is one of the worst directors of all time. I can say that with a straight face. Because you look at the filmography, there's not one good movie he's done. At least someone has had Uva Bull has one film I don't mind. And that's that film Rampage, the first one. Even Uwe Boll is a better director than Olivier Megaton. And that's sad. That's fucking sad. Get a different director. Get Pierre Morel to come back. Get Antoine Fuqua. Get someone else. Get the guys who did John Wick. Get the guys who did Isaac Florentine. Who did Undisputed 2 and 3 and Ninja Shot Over Tear. Or, better yet, just don't do the movie. 
Just don't do the film. Nonstop with Liam Neeson. I enjoy that movie. Much better movie than this. Just watch Nonstop instead of Taken 3. Nonstop. Good movie. Run All Night. Didn't really care for. Walk Them on the Tombstones. Wasn't really my cup of tea. But even then, I would say they're better than this movie in Taken 2, but that's not saying much. Honestly, of this new Liam Neeson stuff, the first Taken and Nonstop are the ones I enjoy. Unknown, didn't care for. Just run all night, forgettable. Walter Monster Tombstone is not an action film. It's more of a drama, kind of a little bit of a thriller, hidden as an action film, but it's not. But, yeah. Taken 3... Again, the first film told the story. My daughter's taken. I go overseas. I kill everybody. I save her. Com like the remake of Commando. And a movie. And it's a great fucking movie. Taken is awesome. I still love the first movie. I think the first Taken is one of the best action films in the past ten years. But sequels, it's like the Hanover sequels. They're fucking useless and awful as shit. I enjoy the first Hanover, but the sequel sucked ass. And this comes from a guy, there's a lot of sequels I enjoy. Rambo 2, and 3, and 4, Die Hard 2, and 3, and 4, Lethal Weapon films, at least most of the sequels. Fucking fly, get out of here. Because it's the summer, get me heated. Shoe fly. Maybe it knows flies like shit and knows I'm talking about a piece of shit. So it's like, no, no, no. I'm talking about a piece of shit. I don't have a piece of shit. You can go away. Because the stinks this match is shit. Seven minutes in. I haven't done much in the detail. Why is this film so bad? Other than it being a useless, pointless story that wasn't needed. Well, Liam Neeson, he's shown his age. You gotta remember the first film was 2008. Almost 10 years ago. It's not 10 years ago, but it's almost 10 years ago. To be fair, Taken didn't come out. It, that didn't come out this year, 2016. But still, 2008 is a long time ago. It really is. And you can tell that Liam Neeson was never the fastest guy, but he's not. even then he's not as fast as he used to be. But who knows, maybe he is, but you can't tell because of the god-awful direction by Olivier Megaton. Or as I call him, Megatron, because he's a fucking Decepticon. It's like he's deceiving people out of their money and seeing these movies in the theater so they become hits, so he keeps getting jobs. He deceives Luc Besson, who write, produces these movies, into thinking he's a fucking good director. Get the guy who did... What was his fucking name? He did the tournament. He did heist. And I fucking forgot his name, but I'll look it up. Scott Mann. There you go, Scott Mann. Get him to direct a take in movie. Or just please don't do any more. Just end it. Olivia Mediton, he directs his action scenes and has them edited like a monkey in heat. Because literally you have a begin okay. Liam Neeson is Brian Mills, still talking with his daughter, played by Maddie Grace. D gives her a birthday gift. She's like, uh, ah, things get a bit awkward. We find out that she's pregnant. She doesn't want to tell her dad. The ex wife Funky Johnson invites Liam Neeson, wants some dinner. She has some problems with her current marriage. The asshole is Doug Ray Scott. This is the guy who is the bad guy in Mission Impossible 2. The guy they wanted for Wolverine, but Mission Impossible 2 uh, took too long to make. So Doug Ray Scott didn't get the job and lost out to Hugh Jackman. Luke, Liam Neeson gets a text, goes to meet Fonta Johnson, finds her dead body. And immediately the LAPD are there. They try to arrest him. He escapes. And this is how 
the director directs an action scene. If I, just Liam Neeson running from cops. Cut, 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 cut. Other side, cut. Other side, cut. Other side, cut, 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 cut. He goes over a fence. Cut, 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 and then more cuts. This is the type of guy who, if he, if a punch, you go, boo, boo. No, he'd be like, no, wait, cut. No, wait, cut. Okay, keep going, cut. No, you don't hit his face, wait, cut. Okay, you hit his face, now cut. And then three cuts there. It's horrible. It's schizophrenic. It literally seems like someone is schizophrenic in the editing. It's just confusing. It's irritating. I should not have to where when you're watching it you have to go back because I found this somewhere to watch I did I didn't fucking want this movie but I, I was I knew it'd be bad but hey the purge sucked the purge anarchy was good the third film who knows this wasn't the case because he had the same director I'm like I'm not taking any chances but so you but if you flip back you have to in order to understand what the fuck's going on. That's not how you do action scenes. That's not how you do action films. It's incompetent. This director is incompetent. Why is he still getting jobs if he's this incompetent? Please. And of course, the answer is because they make money. Transporter 3 made money. I didn't see it in the theaters, so it wasn't me. I saw Transporter 1 and 2 in the theater. The third film looked like shit, and I was right. It was shit. And I ranted on it. I reviewed that film. The first two are good. I didn't see Transporter Refute. I don't care. This So you have this horrible foot chase, and I guess Liam Neeson planned it, so if something goes wrong, he's able to lead cops, or he's able to go to a place to go under a car where there's a scrape that he could slip into the sewer. So I guess he had this planned. So is he as psychic as Jigsaw from the Saw films? Just in case something like this would have happened, like my someone I know dying, me being on the run, I have an escape plan that I'll go to this one specific building and this car that thankfully is there, or maybe he put it there or something, will be hidden for the cops when they go and can't find anybody and they're too stupid enough to look under and see that there's a grate to a sewer so I, again I guess he's psychic he might, he's like Jigsaw from the Saw films he goes in the sewer talks with his team which include people like Leland Orser says I didn't do it talks with his daughter one way or another says I didn't do it she believes him which I'm thankful for, it wasn't some stupid thing like, oh my god, how could you do this? Thankfully they didn't do that, because the way movies are nowadays, I could buy a movie being that stupid, but thankfully they didn't do that. One thing I will say I appreciate, I appreciate that it takes place in America, in LA, because the previous Taken films took place overseas, and a lot of action films, they take place overseas. I should say action films of this nature, this kind, it's nice to see, okay, yeah, take place in L.A. Cool. It doesn't do anything. An inspector is trying to make himself familiar with Liam Neeson's background, trying to find him. He's played by Forrest Whitaker. He might as well be the same guy from The Last Stand with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like he's playing the same character, only he's a little bit more even-keeled, that his character in the last stand, he's a little bit less of a he's less of a hothead. He's more open-minded, less of an ass. And he has a chess piece that he carries around. Fourth Warrior Tour is wasted. It, it, that, it could have been played by anybody. Anybody at all. It's not like some mind games. It's not like The Fugitive with Tom Lee Jones and Harrison Ford. 
it's nothing like that. It's really, again, Forrest Whitaker didn't even need to be in the film. I like Forrest Whitaker as an actor. I know he's in that new Star Wars one, Rogue One, which didn't do anything for me. But I'm just tired of Star Wars. That's just me. Forrest Whitaker didn't even need to be in it. Liam Neeson listened to what happened to his ex-wife, Fompton Johnson, traces her steps, goes to this gas station, looks on a monitor, finds the surveillance footage, which shows that the bad guys are really stupid because they took her in a place that, of course, it's a gas station, of course there'd be footage, surveillance footage. I mean, you would think to be a more remote place, like, I don't know, I mean, a waterway. I just, to me, this is like, there's better places you could take someone instead of in front of a fucking gas station, especially if you don't frame one person, but then a truck comes by and, like, more than one person comes out in a steam mask. And that pretty much does prove his innocence, so it's pretty, you know, it's not too hard. But the cops get in there and arrest him. You would think a cop would be like, hmm, what was he looking at right there on the go? But no, they wait till later in the film because plot. Forrest Wager's just like, wait, he let you arrest him that easily? Wait, wait, wait. And Liam Neeson breaks out. A lot of, even just to a point where it drives on the wrong side of the road, cars crash. I don't know if those people died and the cars that crash. I'm like, did Liam Neeson just cause the deaths of innocent people or at least cripple them or paralyze them? Because some of these people are fucked up. Hopefully they got out of the way. Hopefully they're still safe. Hopefully they're still alive. And the fight, the action scene just, again, horribly edited, horribly done. Can't understand what the fuck's going on. Can't understand the chore the choreography, the geography. Because you have a bad director who does not know how to direct action scenes. You don't. You have a plot that offers nothing to the table, nothing interesting, extremely forgettable villains, even more extremely forgettable action, because n name one good action scene. For people who like the film, name one good action scene. This gets a 6.0. If you like the action scenes, name one. One good action scene. The foot chase, you can't understand what's going on. The car chase, you can't understand what's going on. This edited, like... Every seven milliseconds, another cut. That's what it feels like. He's able to talk to his daughter. Someone says, hey, follow your very predictable schedule. Buys his yogurt drink that says, drink me now. She drinks it now, which makes her feel nauseous and run to the restroom. And lo and behold, Liam Neeson happens to be in there. Uh -oh. Tells her, I don't know what the fuck was the point of that. Just that she, yeah, it's just that he's looking for the killer. That's really the entire point of the scene, and I'm like, she probably already figured that out because of the last two movies. So you did all this just to tell you, keep safe, I'm looking for the killer. Wow! That was completely pointless. I guess, the, I guess the only point with this scene was that we have to find a way for her to tell him that she's pregnant. I'm like, just wait till the end of the movie. I have something to tell you, Dad. I'm pregnant. Then him the daughter and the daughter's boyfriend talk about it throughout the end credits as they pull back. We don't have to hear them, but really, that's what you could have done. <clears throat> so, 
Let's see. There's one scene where he gets ambushed. There's one scene where he gets chased. Oh, fuck. I forgot this. No. No wonder I forgot it. There's a scene where he's being chased in a vehicle. And the vehicle he's in goes all the way down an elevator shaft. And you have to really be paying attention to the point of you would have an eagle eye on it. And not worry about anything called time. Or how much time would that take, really? Or your brain power? Because in a span of seconds, he's able to get out of the car, go through this hole that thankfully is there, and then the time while the vehicle blows up, it blows up the entire elevator shaft. I'm like, I'll watch Live Free or Die Hard if I want to see a sequence with a vehicle and an elevator shaft that was done better. I forgot it because. Just why not? There's one scene where he's tailing someone, he his car gets hit, pushed over, and there's no it's one of those remember back in the day you have those you have the Indiana Jones films and they were based on those serials where they have an ending, there's no way the hero could survive, and then next week they tell you the bullshit way he survived. They do that in this movie. Because this car flips over and the, it's a flat, like, little hill in the desert. Blows up. The guys are there. Bad guys are watching. He should be dead. Then later on they show, no, actually, the car was going here. And somehow he magically got out of the car while it flipped over. And somehow rolled over by the, I guess, by teleportation. And none of the guys saw him. And then, thankfully, there's a hole here that he hid. And then no one noticed it. So then the car blew up and he's still alive. As for the why this is all going on, it's something to do with Fonker Johnson's husband had a debt. To repay to his business partner who is spets nuts. But later on, no, they were tricked. Really, the husband, Doug Ray Scott, framed Liam Neeson because of some business deal to collect the uh, insurance policy, which was like some again, some business deal for some insurance policy that's like a shitload of money. Wow, that sounds interesting, right? Yeah, in the realm of who gives a fuck. Before he finds this out, he goes in to try spit Nazis guys in this penthouse. This lackluster gun battle, which you see you see in the trailer. And it's you see a lot in the trailer because concerning the editing, you don't really see any blood in the movie. The unrated cut. Yeah, the unrated cut was what, this much? Oh, yeah. How Treffy did. There's a fight in a liquor store as well. See, that's the thing. This movie is so forgettable. I'm forgetting the action. You have this liquor fight. There's a liquor store. He has a little fight. You tell he's showing his age a little bit because he slowed down. Throws a guy into a glass door. Him and another guy shooting. Bottles exploding. Gets a guy. Which is weird, the guy's face looks perfectly fine, and then he gets hit one time against this, and then his entire face is bloody, and I'm like, just from that one time? Okay. Maybe he has soft skin. And then the guy takes Liam Neeson's gun and gets him to shoot him in the mouth. It's suicide. It's a suicide. What the fuck else happened? Oh yeah, the big gun battle at the end, which... Grabs a guy, shoots, like you saw in the trailer. 
the scene where the guy shoots in the window, he comes out, Liam Neeson is hiding under a dead body and shoots the guy. The final guy like beats up Liam Neeson a bit and then has the villain James Bond syndrome of talking too much and not finishing the job and so then he stupidly gets his ass fucked up. And that's where the bad guy says, oh, he's playing you like you played us. And then Doug Scott takes the daughter to this plane. Liam Neeson gets in her car, drives, slides, hits the wheel of the plane. Like you saw in the trailer. Has a gun on him. The daughter says, no, don't kill him. You know, the cops are coming. And he says something like, yeah, you'll be in prison, but... When you get out, I'll be waiting for you. Lame. Yay! He did the bad guy got arrested and Liam Neeson framed him. Yay! That's satisfying. First film, guy tries to tell Liam Neeson, just shoots him in the head. Cool. No bullshit. Here, fine, I'll do it because my daughter said so. And you go be arrested, but when you come out, I'll, I'll be there. Just lame. And then Liam Neeson's clear of all charges, gets with his daughter and his daughter's boyfriend. Um, and if the baby's a girl, be named after Fonky Johnson's character. And that's Taken 3. I'm sweating like a pig. This movie. Useless story. Forgettable plot, wasted role by Forrest Whitaker. Lean Neeson tries to do the best he can, but everything's against him. Horrendous directing and editing. One of the worst action directors ever because he cannot shoot an action scene that's competent, that's easy to follow, or that's able to be followed. Forgettable action scenes. The music was nothing. The villains were nothing. The plot was... Oh, I already said the plot. The... Maggie Grace is there to look scared and freaked out. What else is there to the movie? Why does this film get a 6.0? Why does this film make over 300 million worldwide? Because of the name? It, it kills me. I look at films... I don't even think Edge of Tomorrow made that much worldwide. But this film did. Not John Wick, which I know is getting a sequel, but it didn't make as much money as this movie. Not Dread. Not Hardcore Henry, but this movie, which I didn't pay for. I didn't see in the theater for good reason. But apparently a lot of other people did. You know, Take It Two was a piece of shit. And this is just as much a piece of shit as Take It Two, honestly. Okay, maybe it doesn't have something as dumb as throwing grenades off rooftops. And at least it takes place in L.A., in America. So at least the setting, a little bit different from normal. And Forrest Whitaker, I like him as an actor, but he's given nothing to do. So I guess if I had to choose, I would say this is better. But that's not saying much, because it's still horrible. And none of them touched the first film. Again, the first film didn't need sequels. It wasn't warranted sequels. I would not be surprised if one day there's a taking four because it's made so much money overseas and it didn't deserve it. And it's they're god awful movies. It's not the first one. The sequels are. This is a, this is a franchise in which the sequels are awful. They're forgettable, they're horribly directed. Stop giving this motherfucker Olivia Mediton jobs. Please. Stop giving them jobs. You hear me, Hollywood? Stop giving the motherfucker jobs.